My subject tonight is stopping the thief. And I'm taking my text from John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I want to talk about the thief robbing us. No one it really uh, uh, purposely invites thieves into their home to steal things, but they are on the alert for thieves. Um, and there are thieves that will rob you of everything godly. There are thieves that are out to destroy your home and to destroy our society. One of the thieves that I will briefly talk about if, uh, is secularism, the complete separation of church and state. The I do not believe that the media is friends, and uh, on most parts, with apostolic uh, way of serving God. I don't believe that at all. And uh, as a matter of fact, there certainly is an anti-God system that is is there. The I think of also the scripture and the Lord's Prayer being taken from our schools. You say, well, that's not a real big deal. Well, it is. It's it's something that is eroding, and and endeavor to remove God from people's lives, from our children's lives. Materialism can be a thief to be consumed with things. Whoever has the most toys in the end do, does not win. Materialism, liberalism is certainly a thief that is eroding our society. The godless media, it really is a terrible thing. There are tho those who look at TV and newspapers and, and accept it as the gospel. Um, I think of just uh, a few short days ago, there was an independent apostolic church that was burned down. It was, uh, they refused to, to stop holding church services and painted on the church parking lot uh, after, the, in the, after the smoldering ruins uh, of, the, of the fire that burned the church down, uh, painted on the parking lot was these words, now you will stay home. They decided it was their right to have church and they were going to do it. And uh, someone did this. It was certainly anti-God and anti-church. But this is really a, a minor thing compared to a lot of the underhanded and underlying things that are happening. Uh, I think of the, the educational system today and how that uh, in, in Ontario that there is, there is, it was a push on by the former liberal government to bring such horrible, evil things uh, to pollute our children's minds. Uh, today, the educational system is a dilemma and has been for some time with parents. Uh, are we going to give the world permission to indoctrinate our kids? That's the dilemma. There, I, I think of just recently there was a teenage girl that was taken out of school right here in our province in United Pentecostal Church Church. And she was taken out of school uh, because of the the onslaught of persecution uh, because of her stand for righteousness and holiness. Uh, and uh, she is being homeschooled right at this time, as far as I know. There are children that are growing up uh, in our society oblivious to holy and sacred things. Many kids, uh, they don't know anything about God. We have the experience many times of, of having kids that come into our Sunday school never, ever, ever been in a church before in their life never been to church building. There are adults uh, that have entered our church building, and I, I, think I look at them and I question. I say, really, you're telling me it's the first time you've been in, in a church? You've never been in any kind of a denominal church or, or anything? No, I've never been to a church. That is not uncommon to see happen today because children have been raised without uh, God in their lives. Uh, Robert Munch is a well-known author for kids things and he talked about the doing away from uh, of discipline and the doing away of morals among other things uh, the problem of 
doing away with discipline, the problem of doing away with morals in our society. Uh, I think also of the rebellion of the 60s and the rioting of the universities, and I suppose there is much of, of uh, things today that the, the, the evils of our society that's blamed on this, uh, but uh, I, I read not too long ago about the rebellion of the 60s and riots of the universities, and, and I was interested in this book that I, I uh, bought actually back in the 90s. The book was written in 1996, and it was entitled Slouching Towards Gomorrah. I have it in my office. And I was interested in reading this book in light of what's going on today. It, the book was entitled Slouching Towards Gomorrah, the rising of liberalism in America. And, and the writer said then, he said this. This was in 1996. He said the students who were rioting in our universities in the 60s are now running our universities. The left that is rising in North America is alarming. The, the rising of liberalism. And our standards of holiness are looking to be more absolutely ridiculous to some. North America as a whole was founded on godly principles, the Puritans and, and others. And there was a religious freedom that, that uh, was certainly uh, focused upon on achieving this religious freedom. There are, there are men and women who have laid their lives down for religious freedom. There are those that have paid a great price, uh, and many, of course, the ultimate price uh, for, for, the, for the religious freedom that we enjoy. Uh, but this has been, been eroded little by little by little over the years. Uh, not, not, so much, uh, not so much in the closet as such or, or undercover, uh, but openly it's being eroded today. Right in front of our face, uh, that it's being eroded. Someone came to me. This is someone that uh, was not even claiming to be living for God. Someone's not even claiming to be, to be uh, holding to the truth. And they said to me this. I was shocked. They said, don't you dare drop your standards. Keep preaching and teaching standards of holiness. I was standing there just listening. Even they certainly were not living it as I would perceive anyway. Uh, they, 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 they were not. Um, I, was, I was shocked at that. And I assured them that uh, I certainly would do my best to, to keep preaching and, and keep teaching. I have a picture that is uh, in my office uh, right in this church building. And uh, a picture of children that attended our Sunday school uh, back, these are children from uh, roughly the age of three to, uh, to 10. And uh, of these children, 26 of them that were in that picture, there are five out of the 26 that are still serving God today. That's all, five out of 26. So there are, there are a number that are in their late 20s and uh, in their 30s that, uh, that are out there having known one God apostolic, tongue talking, Jesus name baptism, and all of that, yet not serving God. That grieves me. That tells me this. The thief came and stole. And we have to guard against the thief. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, I believe it is, where Paul was writing to Timothy, and, and uh, he said that there'd be perilous times that would be coming. Perilous times shall come, or times of great stress and trouble. That would be in the last days. The music on the left is playing, but there must be those who refuse to bow to the symphonies of Satan, refuse to love the world, and refuse to be part of this world system. Whether Jesus comes right away or whether he decides 
to wait a little while. How will he find you? Will he find you prepared? Will he find you waiting? Will he find you with your priorities right? I want you to know that our far forefathers were right. They were right. They were right in taking a stand and saying there was a distinction of the sexes. They believed that God in the beginning made them male and female. And many are so messed up today. And I, am, I believe this is what's going to happen. There are those that are so messed up that in their teenage years, they have had a, a, an operation that changed them from being one gender to another. They have had radical surgery upon themselves. Uh, but there's going to be some and that, uh, that will wake up and already has happened and, and come to the conclusion, they ruined me. The doctor ruined my life. I'm so messed up. And it's a terrible thing how so many have ended their lives when they realize how messed up they have become because confusion has been brought to their life. What's happened? The thief has come and stolen. There's a voice that speaks loud and tells us that gender does not make any difference, that we shouldn't be partial, or we shouldn't uh, say that uh, there's only male and female. We need to vocalize the distinction of the sexes. There's no such thing as gender neutral. There is no such a thing. And God wants a man to be a man, and he wants a woman to be a woman. He wants a distinction between the sexes. We need to keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the midst of this confusion. And it is confusion. It's confusion because the thief has come. We must not tolerate sin and tolerate unrighteousness in us. But we must be prudent. The pastor that preaches separation, he's right. I think I'll say that again. The pastor that preaches separation from sin and separation from this world system and a separation to God, unto God, dedication to God, he's right. And we stand as beacons of hope. The pastor and the church is responsible to the home but not for the home. Parents must be parents in the home. We must uphold parenthood. There's a tendency and there's an effort to tear down parenthood. It's a terrible thing uh, when a little boy or a girl goes to school uh, and uh, they c their teacher can have the, the rule over the parents uh, and decide things for the child uh, that is against the parents' wishes. Uh, we must uphold parenthood. Uh, our church is only as successful uh, as our homes. Apostolic male dominance is not the answer. Apostolic women's liberation is not the answer. But apostolic biblical submission is the answer. Submission on all levels. Why is there, is there such a resistance to submission? Ask yourself that. Why does it seem like it's a put down? Why does it seem like it's, a, it's an inferior type of thing? I want you to know that biblical submission works. I believe we need to be submitted to God and to one another. Oh, yes, we do. Submitted to the truth of the gospel. God, let our homes be in submission to you. The enemy wants to hang an out-of-order sign on every home, starting with those that are in the ministry. The church is now expected to do what the home should do. Very little time under church influence than home influence. How much time really in the church do we have to be able to talk to people 
40 or 45 minutes, or to children rather, in our Sunday schools. 40, 45 minutes uh, is not a long time. 40 or 45 minutes a week uh, cannot really take the place uh, of what happens in the home. Uh, we need to have godly moms and dads uh, that will stand uh, for the truth of righteousness uh, and say, uh, I want to keep the thief out of my home. Uh, I want to keep the thief uh, out of my life. Uh, I want to keep the thief uh, out of my kids' lives. Uh, I want to keep the thief uh, uh, having an influence uh, and stealing uh, from our home. Homework must not be more important than godly things. I believe, and hear me now, I believe that the number one responsibility of parents is to raise children who voluntarily want to communicate with God by themselves. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I want to draw your attention to that. And I want to draw your attention to the word uh, continually, diligently. It's, it's a, there's a theme here. And Deuteronomy 6 and verse 7 says, Thou shalt teach them diligently or continually, diligently under thy children, whether you feel like it or whether you don't. You shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. and They shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Daily is powerful, but continually feeds daily. You've got to make up your mind. I am not going to let the thief steal from me, but I want the life of Jesus. Jesus turned the tables upside down in the temple. Uh, God, uh, turn our tables upside down. Do it again, Lord. Uh, turn us upside down. Uh, turn us, Lord, to, the, to you. Uh, Turn up the tables and let there be things uh, that are against you that are destroyed. Uh, do we let the anti-God people just brainwash uh, our children in our educational facilities? Uh, teach anti-God morals and as we just sit by and do nothing. Uh, we must face the facts. There are a lot of things that are accepted as the gospel. Wicked people. Wicked people. The whole world lies in wickedness, and we must not accept that. The thief is not going to destroy my kids. We need to stop the thief, cause, and we must let the, stop the thief from breaking through and stealing. Matthew 6 and verse 20 says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. In Joshua chapter 15, and I'm not going to draw your attention to that right now, but I might mention the, the, the focus on that chapter is talking about the daughter of Caleb. And she was probably born during the wandering in the wilderness. She married dad's brother's son, whose name was Othniel. How the faith of Caleb must affected his daughter. I thought this. How the faith of Caleb must have affected his daughter. In the middle of unbelief, Caleb was in the minority, but he was in the right. And he had to spend time with a bunch of unbelievers and wait until they died off and he could get from God what he needed. The inheritance that Caleb received was his and the children's inheritance. Othniel judged Israel for 40 years, the Bible says. In Joshua chapter 14, Hebron was given uh, for an inheritance to Caleb and his children forever. The daughter's name was Asha. Asha. And uh, this, this girl must have been affected by her daughter. She says, I want what dad's got. I want to walk with God like my dad has. 
Oh, that our children could look at godly parents, moms and dads, and say, I want a walk with God like my mom has. I want a prayer life like my mom or like my dad. I want to walk the ways uh, that they walk. Uh, it's not a massacre. It's a battle. It's a fight. When there's a battle, there's a fight. Uh, but there are some things worth fighting for. Uh, what is our battle? Uh, we don't wrestle, but we do wrestle. Yeah. We wrestle not, but we do wrestle. We wrestle against uh, principalities and powers, against the spiritual wickedness in high places against the rulers of the darkness of this world. We fight the good fight of faith. There is no fight uh, without a battle, but the Lord will fight our battles. Uh, there are some things, as I've said before, worth fighting for. You need to stop the thief uh, from entering your home. King Zedekiah of Judah was only 32 years old. i got checking this out. 32 years old when he defied Babylon and was overcome by them. This is a horrible thing. This is what happened. They killed his boys. Probably 11, 12, 11 to 13 years old in that area. That's about how old they were. He killed them. The last thing that he saw in this life was his boys being killed because they gouged his eyes out right after they killed his sons, right in front of him. That was the last thing that he saw before they gouged his eyes out and put him in prison where he died. Now, I want you to notice something. Consistently, whenever the enemy said, pay me or give me something that will stop me from defeating you, from capturing you or destroying you, it's so many of the kings, they would give them, that is the enemy, they'd give them some gold or something of great value. There were some kings that even took some precious things, some gold and precious things from God's house. Precious things and gave them to the enemy. But the enemy, you'll notice this, the enemy never did keep their word. You do this and I won't bother you. You are right. The enemy always wanted more, and they wanted to destroy the influence of God out of the, uh, out of the land. The only ones who determine we are not going to bow to the enemy, we are not going to give in to pressure, only they experience the Lord intervening for them in a miraculous way. Yes, their backs were to the wall. Yes, they didn't know what to do. Yes, they stood helplessly with their little children. And they, they stood helplessly before God and said, God, our eyes are upon you. We don't know what to do. Uh, the one, at one time, uh, the, when they depended upon God, uh, the angel of the Lord killed. Uh, think about it. They, the angel killed 185,000 of their enemy in one night. 185,000. Now, I said all that to say this. The enemy is not going to be appeased if you let down. The enemy is not going to be appeased if you compromise. The enemy is not going to be appeased if you make a deal with the devil. Jesus said the thief is come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I see nothing there where he's going to keep his word. He's come to steal, to kill, and destroy. We should by now know the pattern of the enemy. You can't just look at one particular issue. You must determine, uh, is uh, there something else uh, that is going to be compromised uh, if I let down here uh, for the sake of your family, for your sake? For the sake of those you have influence over, stop the thief. You've got to determine within you, I'm going to stop the thief uh, from entering my home. I'm going to stop uh, the thief uh, from destroying my life. Uh, 
I'm not going to let down. I'm going to refuse to compromise, so help me, God. And in closing, there's part of that verse of Scripture that we use for the text, for our text, that I want to look at. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and destroy. But then, just briefly, I want to know what Jesus said. This is what the thieves come to do. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. For your sake, for the sake of your family, and for the sake of those who you influence, you must stop the thief.